Thank you, Slava and uh, honored academicians and colleagues and all, all uh, participants. I'm Jana Beck and I come from the University of Helsinki and the Institute for Atmospheric and Earth System Research, as Slava was presenting. And I'm really honored to be uh, giving this talk on, on the Sergei Silitinkiewicz Memorial Seminar because I knew him um, over his last years, not, um, not the whole full career, obviously, but when he was working in Helsinki and especially when he was working together with, uh, with me in a project that was funded in the um, Academy of Finland called Klim Echo and, and this photograph is from Arctic uh, areas, which was the focus of that project at that time. So my topic is on land-based land climate solutions and this of course uh, links to the boundary layer processes that Sergei was so much uh, in depth and, and uh, great experts on that. So please the next slide. Okay, so like uh, was already mentioned uh, by Professor Baklanov, Sergei was the founding member of the Pan-Eurasian experiment. Uh, it was initiated in uh, 2012 and it was a collaborative initiative together with European, Russian and, and Chinese uh, scientists. This burning uh, global uh, picture burning of the planet is illustrating here the PEAKS uh, research agenda. And I have highlighted here in red the areas where I worked with him together. Uh, so the interactions between the land system and, and the uh, atmosphere in, in a global perspective. Um, we discussed a lot with him about um, the resilience of ecosystems, um, the changing processes that are changing the boundary layer processes and also what is the consequence of warming in, in the Arctic and, and boreal areas. The next one, please. This figure shows the kind of conceptual um, understanding of the impacts of land ecosystems that uh, the climate can have. So when climate is changing, it has direct effects on systems, ecosystems. It also can have gradual and indirect effects uh, on populations. Uh, communities or even biomes, but also the extreme events that can take place uh, in, as a consequence of climate change are important for ecosystem functions and, and properties. And when the climate is changing, these ecosystem services are also changing and they are reflecting the changing climate, which is then on the other hand also co causing consequences, for example, on how well climate uh, mitigation potential is taking place at the land system level. The next one, please. It's very clear uh, from uh, discussions already several decades ago that in order to uh, reach the uh, pathway of having, not having extreme climate warming uh, in Paris Agreement, uh, two degrees or 1.5 degrees was the set as a limit. Um, the, it's clear that uh, without clearly indicating the role of the natural climate solutions, it will be very difficult or even impossible to reach the goals. So this picture tries to show the way of historic emissions that they have been developing and if business as usual emissions continue and what is the potential for the for the natural climate solutions mitigation by the uh, mid this century or uh, earlier climate change um, uh, or carbon neutrality can be achieved when these cli climate um, natural climate mitigation sources are exploited or taken into action the next one please this has been also emphasized by ipcc in this uh, latest report in um, in this fall, the sixth assessment report, saying that we can and should create also 
natural carbon sinks by sequestering carbon into soils and forests um, and also various technologies that humans can uh, use for that purpose have been suggested but so far the most cost efficient and widely usable technologies are the nature-based solutions. Without increasing the natural sinks, the net zero targets are difficult or impossible to reach. The next one. The highest potential for climate solutions is obviously in forests and um, it consists of reforestation, so creating forests to areas where they have not been existing, but also avoiding forest conversion to other kinds of land use and improving the natural forest management is important for uh, putting together the climate uh, solutions. In agriculture, the use of biochar and ag uh, agroforestry are important. And for example, in wetlands, the coastland uh, restoration or degraded ecosystem restorations will be providing the best climate uh, mitigation potential. Altogether, these sinks can be, in best case, covering something like 20 to 37 percent of the necessary climate um, CO2 equivalent mitigation to reach the 1.5 uh, degrees goal. So, in summary, the, the planning of land use in order to increase carbon sinks and preserve the carbon storages already existing is the fundamental key in climate change mitigation. But of course, the next question is then, is this possible? Is this realistic? And is it feasible? The next slide, please. This is a slide uh, I took from a paper um, published in 2016 that shows the increase in productivity in northern uh, areas. Uh, the uppermost panel is the temperature increase over uh, 40 decades. And the lower panels show uh, different ways of putting together the productivity uh, indexes in, in the northern areas. There is clear trend going similar way as the temperature trend uh, that the productivity has been increasing in, in northern areas. The next one, please. This is um, the Copernicus product showing the global land uh, productivity and the greener, darker green areas are the areas where the productivity has been increasing, the red or yellow areas where it has been significantly decreasing. So although in global perspective the productivity is increasing but there are still areas for example in Central Siberia or Central East Asia where these, um, these areas have been deteriorating, um, for example, to, due to drought and, and uh, especially in rangeland and, and croplands, that has been an important factor. The next one, please. This is a photo I uh, took from one of our workshops with Sergei that shows the in situ measurements in Yamal Peninsula that show the vegetation shifts in 60 years time uh, from tundra, uh, permafrost covered tundra, to almost uh, fully grown forests at these days. And in the map, in, in the satellite picture, the blue areas show uh, regions where there's no shift in vegetation, but the green areas show where the permafrost has been taken or melting or thawing away and giving way to new, new woodlands or new forests. And this is a significant change that has been taking place over the next last um, 50, 60 years. The next one, please. There are also many results showing that the warming includes changes in climate mitigation potential of ecosystems we are the ecosystem produced uh, aerosol precursor gases and, and uh, aerosols that reflect the radiation to the space. And this is a picture, just a recently published picture in uh, where, where it's shown that um, with warmer temperature, with uh, 
heat, uh, heat increasing in the ecosystems, the systems are uh, producing more volatile organic compounds that are then contributing to new aerosol formation and the re reflectance of the clouds. The next one, please. However, it has to be clearly said that the natural climate change mitigation not necessarily continues at the same rate and in same areas uh, as it has been so far. There are many risks involved and this is a recent result from the heat wave and drought episode in Europe in 2018 showing the summer soil moisture anomaly and connecting to that the net biome productivity anomaly in, in summer months. And the dark brown areas are places where the productivity has gone down up to 40% of the normal long-term um, trend. And this is, this is concerning large areas like 24 to uh, 38 million hectares in European Eurasian area. So it, it has a significant consequence on the, on the climate uh, and, and carbon sink on those areas. The next one, please. There are also many other risks related to climate change, like increasing pro um, occurrence of insects and pathogens or wind damage or uh, storm damages and fires, especially in, in northern areas in Canada and, and Siberia. The, the extensive fires are connected to more drier uh, periods and, and um, heat accumulation to those areas, which will then lead to, for example, the permafrost thawing in those areas. The next one, please. Um, I need to emphasize also that biodiversity uh, or climate change and biodiversity crisis are both uh, linked together and, and they should be also solved together. Um, when you click again, you see that there are two squares in the map, uh, the aerial map, this is somewhere in, in central Germany, showing the fragmentation of a landscape that, that is causing um, uh, connectiveness loss, loss on those areas, uh, for example, for uh, pollinators. And the next click brings you a, a temperature series uh, plotted um, against the mean temperature is the species richness of pollinators in those two areas. And when you click again, you will see that there is the share of semi-natural landscape increasing. Plot it again and once more. And when you look at this uh, time series uh, or, or the series of pictures, you obviously hopefully saw that the response of this species richness is strongly related to the share of semi-natural landscape. So the more there is natural landscape available for pollinators, the more resistant they are against higher mean temperatures. The less there are uh, connected semi-natural landscapes, the more the populations will be suffering from heat, um, hotter uh, environments. So this shows that the, we don't, we don't, we should not look at the climate change and uh, alone as affecting the systems, but also the biodiversity crisis, and especially when you are thinking about pollinators, the food production is very much dependent on pollinators. So they should be solved together and looked at the data together. And the next one is, I think, my conclusion slide. Yes. So in, in summary, without these natural carbon sinks, it's impossible to reach the targets for climate neutrality and 1.5 or 2 degrees warming. The ecosystems provide both the sinks for carbon, storage for carbon, and also other climate services like aerosols and albedo reflectance of the, of the uh, radiation. This depends very much on species and management and also the risks from climate change are real and require mitigation actions in, in uh, preparations. And my last 
point is that the natural climate solutions should not be separated from biodiversity conservation or other ecosystem services. And the next one is then of acknowledgement, uh, sincere acknowledgement to Sergei in his contributions to many of these unresolved questions, discussions we had over these workshops and, and the spirit of the wonderful masterpiece by Vincent van Gogh shows the Sergei's uh, enthusiasm and commitment, lifelong commitment. And hopefully that will be remaining brightly in our minds uh, in the future decades. Thank you.